What is good? Bang, we're back. It's a crispy pop there. That, that's, a, yeah. eight, that's like an 8.3. Yeah, that was a that was a big belly flop right there. That's what that was. Yeah, that's a that's because that was bush. <laughs> trying to get out of there. <laughs> All right. So today we are going to hit with some risers and fallers of the running back side. We've done the wide receiver side. You know, the running back landscape has in, been in a bit of disarray through the first six weeks of 2023 for a multitude of reasons. There's certainly been some heroes caping for your team, but really, are they trusted mainstays or are they going to turn heel on you and burn you? Like, you know, oh my God, King, it's a rattlesnake. <laughs> um, so today we wanted to run through the top 10, 15 running backs, see who stayed atop of the mountaintop, who is yodeling up to the top of the mountain, and who is hang gliding. Oh, look, I'm hang gliding. Oh, I'm dead. What an idiot. We're going to kind of walk through this, do this a little differently, uh, kind of walk through it a little bit more one by one, sort of. We can still talk some tears because tears are the most important thing here. Uh, but I felt like with the running backs, it was a lot more, you know, less bloated and more like who the hell's even in here so uh i guess we can start off right off the rip Bijan and and Brees, one two essentially right and everybody's okay with that big d yep thumbs up no arguments students. counselor no arguments here do you, do you have a preference i don't Bijan over Brees. would you swap uh Bijan out f- for Brees in a first yes mm-hmm Regardless mm-hmm. of semantics of any of the first deal, just whatever. I'll take B, I'll take Bryce, Brees in the first. Yeah, if if, if somebody's going to give me the extra capital to to yeah. move like a negligible amount, absolutely. Thank you for the extra capital. Yeah, agreed. All right, well that's about it. Uh, I guess Jonathan Taylor staying staying in the three spot, staying in the three no. hole here. No, for me it's JT. No. It's J- yeah, okay. I'm I'm sticking in the I'm sticking with JT too. I believe. What do you What do you got, uh, KJ? Until Christian McCaffrey like explodes into the sun, uh, yeah, he's 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 staying in that in that grouping with me. Yeah, uh, so it's it's just above JT. Uh, mm-hmm. If somebody says that they want JT over CMC, not gonna be mad about it. But Christian McCaffrey is your team like this year. <laughs> he is just dominating, and so until we can, he's in a an absolute perfect system to put up fantasy points week to week. You know, the injury history is something to be scared about, but. Really, until this injury kept, uh, you know, kicked up this week, and we don't even know how long he's going to be out, he's been an every week just dominating player for you. So, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm sticking with him. He's only 27, and people are acting like he's 32. Yeah. No, I think I would. I think I'd do the first two guys, Brees and Bijan, in a tier, and then I'd go uh, JT and CMC in the next tier. I just, I think JT has the ability to be CMC. Um, or, or they're somewhere around, not quite the receiver, but still, you know, not bad in the receiving game, um, but an absolute monster um, can hit the home runs. And we've, we're seeing Zach Moss do it with this team right now of, of kind of what we were seeing with JT a few years ago. Uh, and if JT was putting up the Zach Moss numbers right now, I think, you know, it, we, we'd be, you know, pretty excited about it. But Christian McCaffrey, you're, you're 100% right. I mean, you know, I think I think he was – downplayed a little bit th- for, through some injuries and we weren't sure how the, the split was going to go with San Francisco. And now it's just like, yeah, like you said, until he's, you know, ready to go catch his AARP card. I think we're, you, you gotta, you gotta respect uh, CMC big D what's your thoughts there. Same concept, man. I mean, all, all four of those are my, my tier one. I, I beginning of July was Bijan and Brees. Now it's Bijan, Bijan, Brees, JT, and CMC. JT hasn't even hardly played, and, and he's kind of popped in there. I just, I, I like the concepts that Indianapolis is doing, and I think there's, I, you know, this may be for a different time, a different discussion, but I, I'm, I'm a little concerned about Carolina's offensive line, and mostly about Frank uh, over there changing and, and changing things because this offensive line for Indianapolis looks, you know, I know there <laughs> were some changes, but man, it's like it's almost night and day. It feels like. Um, from Carolina's end of season last year and to what they look like this year on the offensive line. And same thing for Indianapolis. Like I, I know they had some, some good stuff down the, down the road and, and that, but I, I don't know. I just, I, I like what I like JT's theater that he's going to be playing in um, CMC, as you guys all said, is he's, he's electric. And then Bijan and Brees are, are <laughs> Bijan and Brees. Yeah. They're, they're right. both, they're also electric. So all, all four of those guys, I can make an argument for my tier, um, I think that you could probably, I don't know what the latest startup numbers are, but my assumption is you could probably go wide receiver and then get one of these guys on the flip side or go with this guy and get one of the wide receivers on the flip side. Um, and it pretty easy in the first two rounds. And, and mm-hmm. I would feel, feel great about that. I, I think if I 
the the jump from Bijan down to CMC in the next two years isn't you know I'm I'm always looking to win so it it doesn't really mean too much to me because CMC's a he's a he's a super flex uh, flex position right like you you could uh, you know I'm not recommending this but you could use him as your QB two on on a super flex team because because that's how he scores man he's just he's so right. electric but and and I think all three of the other two or all three of the other two all three <laughs> of the other dudes uh, all have that ceiling too JT's you know been injured and there's been some some stuff but we've seen him when he's on the field he he can you know he can light it up Brees same thing I mean he just came back I think Casey a couple weeks ago you were like oh he's gonna come back and watch him put up like 200 yards or something like that and in that game he busted off a 70 yard run right you know right coming back yeah. and and then Bijan is Bijan so yeah so um long-winded story they're all all four in my tier if I have them I'm 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 fine if somebody wants to give me any of them plus a first for one of the other guys I'm fine with moving to be honest like I'm, yeah. I'm fine with moving from Bijan to CMC if somebody wants to give me a first um or any again, pick pick your poison. Right. I'm fine interchangeable with it. pieces in the top four. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Um, all right. So, so <laughs> here's the question: Who's next? Uh, KJ, what are you? Who who's your preference of the next guy? Because I I think it's I think it's still Saquon Barkley for me. What what do you what do you think, KJ? I I have moved Saquon down. Uh, I feel terrible about it. Like he could <laughs> definitely be back up in this range, but. Uh, yeah, I have two that, uh, that actually have climbed above Saquon now and that's Kenneth Walker. Cause I, I believe, man, I, I really do. I don't think that there's going to be a huge shift. I think that Zach Charbonnet is going to have a place in the offense, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Just what we've seen from Kenneth Walker. I mean, I was looking over and his opportunity share is just unreal. I mean, one, it's top 10, which is great. His red zone touches. He's had 26 of them, which is fourth in the league. I mean, his yards per route run are even the best it's been all his career. So everything is kind of trending up for Kenneth Walker. And we're kind of just keeping him down because Jack, Zach Charbonnet was brought in. But we said the same thing about Tank Bigsby when he was brought in. Mm -hmm. And that brings me to my next point. Mm -hmm. Travis Etienne like is yeah. the next person up. Uh, I, I was really, it was a hard time not to put Travis Etienne in my top five. Uh, with, uh, I believe that I just heard that, uh, and I have, I have not fact checked this, so I'm just going to throw this out willy nilly. But uh, Travis Etienne has 100% of this team's inside the five rushes. That's absolutely insane. That's something we have uh, not seen I've, from him. I've, I saw Tank Bigsby get a touchdown from the one. So, okay. So uh, maybe but it hasn't been it hasn't been a lot. I did. I did happen to catch that at some point. It's so unless, absolutely unless it got insane. called back. But yes, that, either way, it's a ridiculous number if, if it's 95 percent. You know, the only worry that I have with Travis Etienne is that his yards per carry has come down. It, but it's just because he's getting insane volume, right? Yeah. It is yeah. Uh, he was definitely split out. So he was a 5.1 last year and he's rocking about a four this year. But what he's doing on the field, you can't doubt Etienne anymore. It, you just can't like we had worries coming in. You can't have worries anymore. We have to move forward. We have to adjust, right? So ETN and Kenneth Walker are the next two up for me. Yeah, also, I mean, I, sorry, real quick, real quick, Big D. Okay. I just want to let everybody out there know that when somebody tells you you can't do something, just remember the case of Kenneth Walker and how he couldn't catch footballs. And look at this. <laughs> look at this. What a glorious day. Glory be. Glory be. All right. Um, Big D, what you got? Yeah, I mean, it... Great discussion. I, I, I definitely have them ETN and, and Kenny three sticks right up there, but um, I have HN next. Um, he's just so electric. Love it. Um, you know, I know he's hurt that that could be your, your risk risk factor there. But I mean, the dude is just, when we talk about winning championships and scoring points, that's <laughs> he, he, you know, he's, he's showing that he's scoring points when he's on the field, he's getting the opportunities and the system again, going back to the system is, is, is just, it's tremendous for, for, for who he is, how young he is, what he's already shown. So for me, I've rocketed him up my, my, um, my picks. I think he may be the highest riser and all uh, of all my, Running backs. Uh, I take that back. Sure. Jerome Ford is way down there, but uh, but I had to get Ford's name in there. He he won't be in this video, but 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 yeah, H um H -chan, H Chan, geez, is uh is is definitely um in a tier for me. That's my tier two right now. Is just him. 
because that's how much I believe in what he can do for your team, your fantasy roster. And so I'm going to say on the Dolphin Juggernaut. Raheem Mostert better be in your top 20 then. <laughs> 30 he is he, he would yeah. be in my okay. uh, my redraft all right so um for me I, i've i've got a you know, i've got a tier here um and i don't think i necessarily have them in a particular order but if i was ordering them i would say um it would probably be kenneth walker et jacobs and achain achu achin achan <laughs> disrespect the man's name <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I would, I would throw all those guys kind of in that, in that next, in the next tier for me. Um, and, and Saquon could be in that tier, I suppose. I just, I still have a little bit of, I, I'm okay with leaving him one, you know, kind of by himself there. Cause I don't think he's necessarily proved to be in that other tier, just back in that other tier just yet. But I, you know, um, I think he's, he's got a little bit more juice than those other guys of just being absolutely a game wrecker. And now a chain has been doing a chain, whatever it is, has been doing, uh, <laughs> fantastic on, on, you know, the work that he's been getting. Uh, but I still, uh, kind of have all those guys grouped together, um, as the next group of running backs for me. So n- not terribly far off of everybody. Um, I still got Jacobs in there. Jacobs is, or still have Jacobs in there rather, um, you know, he's, he's still sneaky in there. He's got, he's third in the league in carries right now. I've, and he's third in receptions too. It's just kind of like, you know, nothing good is going on in the Raiders system right now, but he's, he's still getting the work and he's had a couple of bad fantasy outputs coming off of sitting out for a while, but really has just kind of been, you know, rock solid the last couple of weeks. Um, he's still RB, 11 um and even those first two weeks uh that weren't great it was nine and nine and then he's gone 11 27 19 and 11 uh with a carousel of quarterbacks in there and just you know a whole lot of really nothing going on with the vegas offense nothing sexy anyway and and you know will he be in vegas next year i don't know but i think still an extremely good player who has been an rb1 for most of his career and and just i feel like never gets the love uh that that some of these other guys get so i'm, I'm keeping jacobs in there what what's uh Big D, who's your next guy? Yeah, I mean, that group that you said is is basically all in my next tier. Um, Barkley, ETN, uh, Kenneth Walker, Josh Jacobs. And the only one that's not on there that I didn't hear was Gibbs. I still have Gibbs really high. I know that he hasn't produced yet, but his draft capital, I'm not going to hit him too hard for being injured. The way that they run that system there, I still have, you know, really high hopes for him. So I, I still have him in this, uh, call it tier three. And 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 it, if it was my next guy, it would probably be Barkley. Um, you know, Barkley or or Walker would be my next guy. But but those those five characters, Gibbs, Barkley, ETN, Walker, and Josh Jacobs are all my you know six through ten basically. Pick them however you'd like. But yeah, <laughs> I'm happy with all of them. Uh, KJ, what what's your uh, thoughts here? Yeah, I, I'm pretty much lockstep with you guys. Uh, so I'm Barkley, Jacobs, and Achan uh, on the next tier. Uh, I wish I brought HN up higher, but you know, some people steal my thunder out here. It's fine. You know, it's, it's, it's fine. <laughs> you, man. Thought you, were, you thought you were going to be the, the hero I, bringing him up that high, huh? I did, man. He's, <laughs> he's in my top nine. Uh, so yeah. I thought that was, that was hot, but, uh, no, I, I agree with everything big D said, he, you know, just what he's shown in a very small sample size. The fact that he's not a prototypical build is the only thing that does, doesn't like keep him up even sure. higher. And this is an offense where they could continue to utilize multiple backs and likely will. I mean, this is going to be a mess, but he still is the home run play on every play, right? So he can give it to you in one play and you're, you're not going to be worried about starting him any week. Jacobs, same thing. I think people are really quick to forget about him and just how good he is. And the fact that he's only 25, uh, there's a lot that we still haven't seen from Jacobs. He's going to be on your team for a while. So if somebody is looking to ship him out because the offense mm-hmm. doesn't look good or they feel he's getting old or worried about that second contract, trust me, he's getting it. It's going to be a good contract and he's going to be on a good team. What can you say about Barkley? The guy is just so good. We just haven't been able to see anything for right. him yet. So it's tough Injuries right and now. situations with him, you know, injuries and situation yeah. has, hasn't been favorable. Yeah. And, and that's the toughest bit, right? I mean, that, that is a right. part and that's why you could probably get him at a discount right now. You know, people couldn't even approach you in a Barkley trade last two years. This is the first year that you probably have a good entry point on him. So, you know, take advantage. Yeah, I'm not, I'm certainly not scared. Um, no. I think he's still just fine and will be just fine for, you know, if he wasn't, if he wasn't a, a great pass catcher and couldn't do so many other things, I might be a little worried, you know, as you were going into the twilights, but I think, you know, we, we got, 
you know, shell shock there with a little bit for running backs. Cause so many, you know, the girlies and the David Johnsons and, you know, some of these guys just didn't, didn't pan out and get into their thirties. But I think a lot of these guys that we're talking about Ecklers and CMCs and Barkley, and I think they're going to be productive into 30, 31 uh, area, Matt Forte esque, um, you know, and Kamara's and, and, you know, those kind of guys, uh, you know, the ones I worry about are the guys like Mixon's who are a little bit of a Shethade yeah. off the field. Who Do they want to be good for a long period of time? You know, and I don't know that Mixon does, but it seems like guys like Eckler and Barkley and CMC really care as long as their body can hold up and they can take care of it, uh, which, you know, that looks like they do. Um, unfortunate with Barkley, but I mean, we were saying the same thing about CMC just a few years ago and yeah, he's got a little oblique thing right now, but the first six weeks we haven't even, you know, had a glimmer of worry about, you know, what CMC's usage is. Anyhow, let's keep it moving here. Um, I, I, I think I would kick the next one off with Jameer Gibbs. I, I had him up in there the whole time for basically what you were saying, big D I just dropped him down. I mean, if he was on Miami getting the being used, like, and you were seeing what you were getting with a chain there, you know, I, you know, Gibbs would be, like you said, probably up in, uh, you know, the near floating near that tier one, uh, but, but it's not, but the capital stays in there. You've seen some bits and pieces of, excitement from Gibbs you're just not sure exactly what the usage and, and how it's going to be moving forward I have faith in the in the OC how long does he stick around Ben Johnson I'm not sure um, right. but you know it's a good line we haven't seen in the last two weeks because he's but you know it's dynasty man I know we get so caught up in everybody being having to be awesome having to be you know Devon Achan uh, right off the rip you know, and, and, you know, nobody really even saw that coming per se, uh, like, like it, like it has been. Um, but, and we haven't seen it from Gibbs. So I think you got to practice a little patience. If you have them, I think it's a good asset to have. Uh, if there's an inpatient owner, maybe you can swoop in cause he hasn't been playing. Um, but I think, I think it's all there. Um, and I think the scheme and the offensive line are, are, are really important. And, and Gibbs has that. It just needs to work into, uh, you know, in, it comes to fruition of, of what we were thinking about with Gibbs and, and hasn't quite, but you know, I'll just, we'll keep preaching patience over here. So um, I got Gibbs and then, you know, what, what, what do you guys have next here? I think this is where it gets really even more interesting here. Who would be your next guy? Uh, KJ. So to round out, uh, yeah, my Baker's dozen here is my next tier. So tier four here, uh, Jameer Gibbs, top of the list. Absolutely. I still believe uh, everything points to him actually being a productive back, somebody who you can actually count on. I mean, when he's actually in the game, he does get some work. He's just not getting the run that we want. But with David Montgomery kind of becoming more than we even thought he would be, that's pretty tough for a, a start out rookie, right? They took him very high. Follow draft capital, follow what you know the talent is. I, I mean, when he's actually in the game over those four games, he still had a 14 half target share like that's that's really good uh so mm -hmm. he's somebody that you can actually still rely on i mean he and he still has a, a great uh a juke rate and a great breakaway run rate and just watch him on the field i beg you to just watch him like he is actually really freaking good like he doesn't go down the first tackle he continues to move through contact he looks like alvin Kamara when, when we first saw him come out like i i don't make that comp lightly right. uh, i i think that he is that caliber of a player uh, which if he has way more, uh, 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 like way better of draft capital, the, the touches are coming. It's just the one thing that keeps me from moving him up any higher than this is David Montgomery. And, and that's sure. a fair assessment, especially with them giving him a three-year contract. Um, it's going to be a roadblock, but this is where you practice your patience. You definitely take advantage of somebody who can't use him this year and buy him on the cheap. If you can right now, buy him, like buy him on the high. If, if somebody really wants to, I really do believe he's going to be a staple for your play for your team. So um, yeah, Jameer Gibbs is the top. And then we go into Deandre Swift. You can't deny what this guy has put down on the field and one of the best running offenses. Uh, and I think that this is going to be something that you can rely on for multi-year. And I think that they're not, they're not dumb. They're, they're going to keep him and they're going to continue to use him. Uh, and then Tony sure. Pollard, Still have Austin Eckler. Yeah, no, I, I think for me that tier is yeah. I had I had Gibbs and Eckler kind of. I think Gibbs and Eckler could easily be up in that next tier. Just a little pause on both of those guys right now. 
Um, but then I have Pollard and Swift as well in this kind of next tier. Big, Big D, what are you what are you thinking here? I'm trying to. Oh, I don't see Pollard at all in my top twenty. That's <laughs> odd. The dude's way down for me. I'll be honest. But, wow. but in my next tier is uh, Montgomery, Eckler, Javante Williams, and Tajay Spears, baby. Uh, tier four. So Boy, spicy. Uh, Montgomery Ooh, has got to be. Up. I mean, you just laid down. I didn't even have to talk. KJ just laid down the pave, paver stones for me for Montgomery. I mean. You know, he he feels older than what he is. He's only 26. He's in, you know, he's he's showing that he can handle um, that that offense. He's 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 locked in. You know, same reason I'm so excited about Gibbs is the same reason I'm so excited about Montgomery. And I think the three year contract, I don't understand why I wouldn't have him up in my, you know, at least in my top 12. Um, And so he's he's up there. Eckler is just, you know, he's he's a beast. He's the. He's got the ceiling of a CMC on uh, maybe not every game, but on on a lot of games. He's he's you know he he has that um, that ceiling. His age and some of the off off season slash political stuff has got me pushed him down just a tad on my my list. Um, political, not in the sense of like politic politics, but po- political in the sense of like where is he in the Chargers organization? Where what direction are they going? That kind of mm-hmm. thing. So, mm-hmm. um, but he's still you know he's still in the top twelve. And then I think Javante Williams is coming back from injury and Denver's a shit show right now. But, but I mean, he, I wasn't expecting much, much from him this year anyways, coming back from his, what was that? ACL, I believe. Yeah. More, more, more ACL, than that. MCL. Yeah. yeah he, had, he had a couple Might have been different an things. Yeah. And, and the dude's young. So I, I think that from a dynasty perspective, he is still right there with, with those boys for me. And then I, I just, I mean, there's already rumors about King Henry getting moved out. I mean, if Spears, Spears to me is uh, is is locked and loaded in that top like you know 15 running backs. Um, Love it. We talked about it on the rookie show. Um, I talk about it now. Uh, you know, get him while you can because he's he's electric. He's 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 great with the ball and he's and another. It's a, it's a, it's another great system. I know that they're they're down right now. You can't win them all. Um, I, I think there's going to be some changes there, but I don't think they're going to change too much away from using the running backs and having that high utilization. And so Spears is right there for me. Yeah, I like it. He's spicy. He's got the Texans hat on. I thought he had a, a chef coat to start this thing on, but uh, he mm-hmm. should should have worn the chef coat because – Cooking it oh, up. Yeah, Chef Big D's got a spicy meatball there. What, what will we be doing? Where, where do you think Nick Chubb would be falling right now if if healthy? If healthy? And then if, if healthy, where do you think he would be? And then kind of where do you think he, he lands now f- for you? Is he nowhere near this top 25-ish? Yeah, his injury really has me worried. So I have him down in the – he's 28th currently on my rank list. He's one of the higher – the bit the farthest falls, I guess you could say. Um, so that was tier seven. So he was in my tier four. So that would have been right around here, Eckler and that. Uh, Eckler, Williams, Spears. Yeah. Yeah, I would have had him up in that Kenny Walker – uh, area for me and and certainly has is not in the top 20 right now uh kj what do you what are your thoughts no i'm the same too i would have had him barkley jacobs uh hn tier for sure uh so he would have been in my top 10 firmly uh now he's sitting around rb 27 28 uh i think that he still does make a recovery and we still see usage out of him i mean he's still one of the best pure you know rushers that we've seen come into the league and i believe that we do see a, you know a form of that again it's just it's hard to say right now what that form is going to look like it's it's a tough injury definitely a tough break for an elite tech. Yeah, nfl I, i'm i'm pretty sad yeah i think it did just come i think it's just an mcl though um i don't think he did got the acl so um no know, could, i heard there was some worse. additional damage but it wasn't as bad as they thought uh, yeah yeah i don't know i'd have to look that up but i haven't been on top of my injury news there um a couple more guys before we get out of here where does kyron fall in this because we i led this off with talking about guys who are caping for your team kyron's certainly one of those guys what, what are we what are we doing with kyron because that doesn't i don't feel like i'm he's yodeling up the mountaintop to to up in this range but he's got to be coming into play here at some point for just what he's doing it, it does seem like you're worried long time in, in dynasty. So he's been, you know, a little bit of cell talking for us. Uh, but, you know, again, we, this devastated landscape of running backs is if, if you're in any way competing, it's so hard to get rid of a guy who's scoring uh, like Kyron Williams. If you're not getting another running back and who the hell's doing that, uh, that's scoring points. So 
What are you? What, what are we doing with Kyron right now? Big D, I'll go to you first. What yeah, are I mean, we I, doing with Kyron? Yeah, <laughs> what are we doing? I was trying to find him. Um, um, I think he's probably he's he's probably in that. Um, so I so I'll just real quick the the tier right below the one we just talked about is Charbonnet and Swift, um, mostly because I don't know Swift's contract. I think, you you know, KJ hit it right on the head. But I know Philly doesn't necessarily have to sign them because that's who Philly is, and they do they do some magic when it when it comes to filling in some spots on the roster and Charbonnet. I, I think he's right in that tier for me. Like, so so top 20 still, top, top you know, maybe even top 18. Mm-hmm. But but it's kind of like, you know, I, I, I'm surprised, I'm shocked. He's definitely moving up, but he's – um, I'm, I'm still holding out to, um, I know he just had an injury, so we're not going to see him for, for a while, but, but I'm, I'm still holding out, but I, I, th- I think he's right in that Charbonnet Swift, um, you know, Brian Robinson area for me. Yeah. Okay. And then Ford, any, any big movement for Ford or is it just kind of like, Hey, we're, we're playing the backup right now. Glad to have him. But what, what are your thoughts with Ford here? Uh, KJ. Oh, so I don't get to talk about Kyron Williams. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah go. Give, it give me a little. No, give fine. me both. Uh, give me so. both. <laughs> give me Kyron no, no, and then it's, Ford. It's, it's fine. So Jerome Ford, I haven't bumped him up very high. I, I do think that Ford is more of a, a victim of opportunity than he is of like pushing for a role. So I think that he just fell into this a little bit more. I think that he's a great asset for your team because he's going to put up points and it's a good it's a good offensive line. And when Watson is in, it's a good offense. You know, overall. So that those are the kind of RVs you want to have, but. Let's talk about Kyron for a minute, because I don't think people are really understanding like exactly what Kyron is doing for your team. One, I, I mean, total TDs, he's he's third on the year. Like that's mm-hmm. that's pretty wild. Like just coming into this rushing yards, he's number four. Routes mm-hmm. run, he's number one. Woo. That's, that's wild. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Route participation, number two. I mean, he 73.1% route participation. This isn't something that we saw coming. Breakaway runs. He's Certainly not. still top 12. It, like, I, I'm telling you, man, like, it, and people are still not even understanding like what he's actually done for you. So I, I'm bumping him up. Like I took a look at the stats a little bit. His yards created, he created 413 yards on his carries. So that's after first contact. That's pretty wild. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. he's pretty legit. He's in a good offense. This is somebody that you actually should be buying right now. If somebody is either worried about the injury or is worried that they're going to move away from him quickly. I was a Zach Evans believer. And, and yet here I am. Like I have to mm. respect what the man is doing on the field. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, he, he's been, he's been great. Um, hasn't, hasn't cracked into the top 20 for me yet, but I, you know, it's possible. He, he's been great. He's just below. Uh, so if we got into the next tier, uh, I just bumped him yeah, up again. Ahead. So I bumped him above Damian Pierce. That's really it. But so yeah. he's below Isaiah Pacheco and Javante Williams, but above Damian Pierce. Yeah. So my next tier is Montgomery, Stevenson, uh, Brian Robinson, Pacheco, and Javante. And then, um, so then I'll, I'll kind of end, end there for the most part of talking about more guys, but um, that, that's kind of where I'm at. Pacheco being being a big mover, Brian Robinson being a big mover, Ramondre falling a little bit, Monty moving up a little bit. Um, so you know, I think that tier was kind of a was was a bit of a mover and a shaker. Um, you know, Najee not not in this ranking, Damian Pierce not in this ranking, Miles that, Sanders not in this uh, ranking, Joe Mixon not in in these rankings here for me uh, just yet. That, that where where we're covering tonight anyway. Um, any any thoughts on any of those guys, Mixon? Um, uh, Miles Sanders, um, you know, guys, I, I, we certainly loved Miles Sanders coming in. I think you hit on it, Big D. Uh, you, you saw that offensive line playing pretty well at the end of last season. Uh, and then Frank Wright comes over here, and now all of a sudden this offensive line uh, isn't any good. Now they have had some injuries, and, and the Colts line had some injuries last year when Frank was over there and then replaced. Um, so, it is kind of interesting. What do we, you know, Miles Sanders? Any any feelings on that, Big D? Yeah, I mean, I've got Sanders kind of kind of just below that tier that we we talked about. Brian Robinson, Najee Harris, they're all kind of in the same tier for me. It's kind of a wait and see approach. I um not well, Brian Robinson, not so much, but Miles and and Najee. Um, I I still believe in you know we look at usage, and I don't have the stats in front of me, but I was looking at Miles' usage from the team perspective, and it's still really high. I mean, the dude's catching. You know that there was a 
you know, pretty popular clip about him being more involved in the passing game. And that's definitely showing on the, on the numbers. I mean, it, uh, fantasy points wise, it's not quite there yet, but the way that they're using him and utilizing him, I think that once that offense starts to move the ball a little bit more and gives them some more opportunity. Um, I, you know, I, I, I believe that there's still a ton of value there for miles. So I'm, I'm still buying him um, yeah. at the depressed value. Um, Najee's a little bit different. Um, he, he's kind of, um, he's one of those guys that I'm going to watch in this next quarter. I, I break my seasons up into quarters, right? And so this next quarter that's coming up of, of football, I'm, I'm definitely going to keep an eyeball on him now that the offensive line in, in Pittsburgh is starting to get a little bit healthier, you know, things will, you know, I, I think the schedule, you know, evens out a little bit. So, so anyways, I, I'm, I'm going to keep an eye on him. I know that he bulked up on the off season, but I mean, he's been getting hit. Like every game that I've watched, the all 22 film, the dude is like getting hit negative one yards. And so he's not the type of, you know, you get to Derrick Henry at the negative one yard line. You're, you know, it's, he can still break through, but, but more often than not, he goes down like a redwood. So, um, and I think Najee's not quite Derrick. I won't even say not quite. He's not Derrick Henry. That's not what I'm saying, but he, he needs a little bit of steam. And so it'll be interesting to me to see, you know, um, where he goes. And then just real quick on Jerome Ford, I, I bumped him up about five tiers because <laughs> yeah. he was way down there. So, sure. so he, he's uh, just above Pollard for me, just to give yeah. you an idea of where I feel on, on uh, Tony, but, but, but Ford, I mean, he's, he looks good in the offense. We don't know with Chubb. I, I did look it wow. up. It looks like there was an ACL when they went in to fix the MCL. There was, some, oh, there gotcha. was an ACL um, uh, um, um, surgery that needed to be done, or maybe they did it at the time. I'm not a, not a doctor. Um, but, but he's, uh, he, he looks good. He seems to be in a system that's working for him, you know? And, and so I, I definitely have him, have him, have him, you know, going up the rankings a little bit. We'll, we'll see what the, you know, come mid season when we do this again in a, you know, four or five uh, weeks from now, you know, we'll, we'll see what it looks like, but, but right now I definitely have to give him his props. He's, he's playing good and he's getting the opportunities and he looks, he looks good. So, yeah. Yeah, James Cook's another one that I wanted to squeeze in that last tier. I'm just a little scared of the how, how they're using him. And and like I think he has the ability to be up in there. And if we could just get a little bit more usage in the passing game um, and really in the run game, uh, you know, he's you know, he looks good when he's doing what he's doing, uh, but uh, not not quite ready to crown him up in that last tier. KJ, any uh, last thoughts here uh, before we wrap up? Just just to take Casey's like entire last statement, snip that out, send it to whoever it still believes in James Cook and sell him now. <laughs> <laughs> not a believer, huh? No, not at all. Sorry. I, I think that this is an offense that is still going to be predicated on, on Josh Allen kind of making the offense move. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be inconsistent to say that at best. And I, I mean, I I've watched James Cook. He's good. Not great. And I think that you could still sell him on the idea that somebody thinks he's going to be great. So that's those are the kind of people I want to move. Same thing with Miles Sanders. I took a look at the schedule uh, just to touch base on that again, and he has some pretty rough games kind of coming. Like I'd, I'd be trying to move him too. So, I mean, not a believer yeah, in those people. Sorry, and I'd be buying. So yeah, go for yeah. it. <laughs> not not it's you know if it's a good time to we buy Miles Sanders. I it's know. a good time to buy Miles. You don't think you're you know selling them is you're going to be getting pennies on the dollar. Um, what, what about what about Kamara? That yeah, that's the, a good the call. last of the last older ish running backs that mm-hmm. I have him kind of further down than than quite a bit of the other a, aging guys, we'll call it. Um, I, I just don't know. I know we talked about trades and we and I, I know, Casey, on the last show, you talked about a trade that you just did with Kamara. But but I mean, since he's been back, I mean, he's producing, awesome, <laughs> you know, man. he's do, he's doing good. Uh, the great. offense is struggling there in, in New Orleans, but he hasn't been. So um, what what are your guys' thoughts on Kamara? I mean, I think he would I'm buying. essentially be really close to the next tier here for me. So that's, you know, basically where I'd be at with that. Yeah, but uh, for sure, you know, the old, you know, it's the older guys, it's you're buying if you're good, you're selling if you're bad. Uh, you know, I, if, if I don't see that, I'm going to be, you know, if it was just some bad luck and some injuries and I'll be right back to where I want to be next year, I could see hanging on to Kamara for another year. But if I'm if I'm heading more to a retool rebuild, that he'd be a sell for me. But yeah, he's at 21 points, 18 points and 17 points since he's been back. Like you said, offense isn't good. The Saints are, look like they're, you know, struggling a little bit. Uh, but, you know, Kamara has been excellent. 
No, absolutely. I mean, everything you said is is just dead on. He's getting, uh, you know, a huge amount of carries, which is great. Obviously, he's getting the receptions that we usually see with Kamara's usage. So uh, I don't think a lot of things are changing for him in the short term. Now, the only curiosity I have is what this offense looks like when Jamal Williams is healthy. Uh, so I think that that's going to vulture some stuff, uh, as it should. They brought him in for a reason. But the offense as a whole just seems to kind of have uh, everything predicated on two players, and that's Olave. Uh, you know, at time, I guess you could say Shahid, but Olave and Kamara, and they are really making this offense run. So uh, me, I'm buying uh, in a lot of times, um, but that's just because I'm always trying to make that push, and I'm always trying to make my team better. So if I feel I can get them at a veteran discount, then I'm going to take advantage. So I'm trying to buy him for two twos. Um, I know that that's – not always accomplishable. I think everybody's going to want a one at this point because of just what he's done. Uh, and I'd be leery there, but if really, if that's the missing piece for me, I might not, you know, be too afraid of doing it, to be honest, as long as I'm guaranteed to be like bottom tier the first, you know, I want to be back end. Sure. Sure. All right. Any, any final thoughts uh, on this running back group as a whole big D? I, my, my only thought was going back through this is it's, it's always funny to me how much movement there is in the running back world comparison to wide receiver world, right? Like mm -hmm. when you're looking at rankings and, and you're looking at that and, and it just goes back to the, to some of the off season shows about loading up and running backs and drafts, you know, doing those kind of things. Cause those, those guys just, the value just peaks and or not peaks, but jumps um, and, and sometimes peaks out of, out of nowhere. And you can, you can definitely turn, um, you know, decent profit or, and, or you can definitely use that to push. So just, yeah. just looking at, you know, when I was looking at the change of what, you know, what players went from where to where, there wasn't a lot of drop in the in the wide receivers. Like when I say drop, the, you know, in tiers, it wasn't like somebody dropped like five tiers, you know. But in the running back world, <laughs> yeah, I've got I got people shooting up and down all all over the place. So it's it's uh it's all it's always a fun time to to rank. And if you if you uh, you in your personal world want to try that, you know, just just give it a roll. You know, grab grab a sheet, write out some of the running backs, and see see what you do, and then just keep track of it over a couple months and. You know, you'll be surprised um, the the value changes that go through your mind. I think it helps you become a better dynasty um, fantasy player in the long run. So, yeah, KJ, final thoughts? Exactly. No, no, I agree, a hundred percent. It's just you know, don't be afraid to to do some research. You know what I mean? Build your tiers. Have fun with it, man. Honestly, doing this stuff as we come on here, this is fun, man. Like I, I love yeah. having these, you know disputes with other people and we talk about how people are moving and people are like you're crazy and i'm like god i think you're crazy but you know this is why we're here this is what makes this great and be willing to change your opinion don't get locked into a take that's something that i see people do way too often uh you know it's okay to be staunchly advocates of your players but be willing to have the conversation and be willing to change your mind because i mean just as we were sitting here talking i mean i've moved players around three times uh to be honest well, with you yeah. uh, because you guys make great points yeah that's that's you know kind of the point you know we did the wide receivers already well if this is out and you haven't seen that or you have seen that already and you're watching this one like you know i've i've probably are i thought about that show you know multiple times of being like damn i should have moved Devontae adams down a little bit i should have probably broke up the old group and put tyreek a little you know like you guys were saying you know, I think, you know, so it's as, as I, I didn't even really complete these running back tiers until we had this conversation right now for this reason, because I knew I was going to, you know, jostle some guys around. Uh, and that's just kind of how it goes. And tomorrow morning, you know, I'll I'll get a wild hair up my ass and somebody will, you know, move up or down. Uh, so uh, that, that that's that's the fun part about it. And that's why I think tiers are important in these sort of exercises to you know, find tier groups and being able to move within tier groups rather than a singular uh, player. So I think that's an You've had the old bull. And now you want the young calf. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. All right. Well, we appreciate you guys. Uh, we're going to head over to Patreon and hit us, uh, hit you with another episode over there. So uh, if you've been, fucking with us for a while and you want to check out what's going on over there you can hit it with the five dollar holler um how about you get a discord uh invite and you know a lot of chatter going on over there and then we do three extra episodes on the patreon side if not as always be sure to like subscribe comment below five star reviews on the podcast we see how many views we're getting there's not enough five star reviews go ahead and uh give me give me a couple more five star reviews on the podcast what are you doing just click a button now you don't even have to write anything anymore all you have to do is hit five stars yeah come on help your boy out um, 
So appreciate you guys. You can check. Make sure you go follow uh, KJ on the Twitters. What's the Twitter handle? At the FFB Tech and uh, and Big D. Uh, you 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 need a you need a Twitter plug over there. No, I'm good. Good. You, you, you can find me on Twitter if you look really hard. I, I got my my Waldo hat on, so yeah. Um, but uh, you know, you, you can find me there. Um, but definitely follow KJ. He's he's got all kinds of good stuff. And follow the FFT. Yeah, fuck Twitter. <laughs> but very useful tool. We misuse it. Um, appreciate you guys. We'll see you next time. That, that's 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 right. That's right. Well, actually, we're on we're on the you know X. Going to give it to you. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. We appreciate you, and we'll catch you next time. Peace.